Hello and welcome to another episode of High Point Music's Gear Reviews. In today's episode, I've got a bit of a cool one for you. I've got the Rumble Seat by Analog Alien to show off. The Rumble Seat is a three-in-one pedal. It's got an overdrive channel, a delay channel, and a reverb channel. And it's kind of aimed at solving solutions where a one-pedal system is really easy to manage. One power supply, one set of leads, and three very, very common sounds that you can use in probably just about any genre of music. So just quickly, this is what it sounds like. So the Rumble Seat by Analog Alien gives us three very, very common sounds. And this is the problem that it solves. It gives us some options in a pedal that is one enclosure and very, very easy to move around and get all of your sounds from an all-in-one stop box. So before we get into going through each of those individual channels, my clean tone is my Fender Stratocaster. Running into the rumble seat, we're coming straight out of the rumble seat into the two notes La Clean, and then from the two notes La Clean off to our recording system in Ableton. I'm using the built-in cab sim on the La Clean, as I do for every review. Works well, sounds good, and gives us a really good platform for testing these pedals against. So the first pedal I'm going to show you in this three pedal combo is the overdrive. People who've watched this channel before will probably have an idea of how important overdrive is to your dynamics, how much it can influence the mood and the feel of a song by turning it on or off in the right times, or by playing dynamically into it to get those responding sounds as well. This particular overdrive is based on a 69 Marshall Plexi, which is a very, very famous vintage amplifier uh, known for its great bright gain sounds. So let's check it out. We just punch the rumble drive on. It is the first pedal in the chain of pedals, despite it being on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side where the input connection is. And you can see that the orange LED here corresponds to the orange knobs, which I think is a really good feature, being color-coded. Having so much on the pedal, that makes it pretty easy to see. We've got our output volume, a tone control, and a gain control. I've got the gain sitting at about 2 o'clock at the moment, and by itself, it sounds like this. So that's it at about a pretty common distortion level, what I'd consider is a fairly common rock kind of sound. And this is what it sounds like cranked.
And with the gain turned all the way down, we get a nice, just cleaner sound with not as much volume. So I'm just gonna bring that up a tiny little bit on the output. Cool. So it has some pretty good dynamic range. The picking is still nice and articulate and the gain doesn't saturate the sound so you get all of, all of that attack coming through. It doesn't muddy up the chords as some higher gained overdrive pedals do do. Other options that we have here to control the sound for our distortion is a tone control, which is basically a low pass filter. So what happens is when the tone control is turned all the way up, I'm just gonna bring that volume up to a suitable level. we get the ability to just shave that treble off the top. So you can hear. It does some pretty drastic reduction of the treble range. If you're playing with some vintage pickups or pickups that are a little bit sharp on their high gain settings, then that's a really great way to make sure that you're not creating any unpleasing or sharp sounding tones. I like this style of tone control. We had it on this Supro drive as well. And because you can just leave it turned all the way up to let all of those harmonics come through, I think it's a great way to show off lots of different, get different guitars if you're using multiple guitars and as a way to make sure that your overdriven tone when you're palm muting and playing those brighter arpeggiated chords and things really stands out in the mix. So the tone control works really well. I've never had to use the full output of the Rumble Seat drive channel. It's pretty punchy. So, so far so good. So moving along, we go from our rumble drive, the next channel in the pedal is our delay. Now this particular delay is a bucket brigade style delay. It's got fairly similar decay characteristics, uh, but with a longer delay time than a standard analog delay. It does go from 25 up to 650 milliseconds. Normal analog delays sit around that 300, 350 kind of range. So a little bit longer time for some slower repeats is a pretty cool thing, particularly if you're playing more ambient sort of sounds or more prog kind of sounds. Let's have a listen and see what it does. I've just got it dialed so the mix is even so we can control the volume of our effect against our clean tone, the number of repeats that the delay produces, as well as the actual delay time itself here. This is what it sounds like just as you see there on that shot. So you can hear it has a pretty nice decay. I am going to just add a few more repeats in so we can hear that a little more, a little more specifically. Which has a really nice tone to it. If we do drop all the way up to our minimum pot position, we get that really quick slap back, slap back like sound. So 
So it doesn't really get in the way, but gives some nice color to those chords. If we go to the opposite end and we turn that all the way up, we get this slow time. Which is pretty cool for some lead work. If we go to our neck pickup, some pretty cool ambient sounds in there. So we'll go from our minimum repeats and full mix. So you get one reasonably clean repeat. He's a little bit louder than the original there though. That's about right. So you get a little bit of a boost at the last tip of our mix. However, It sounds pretty good when it's balanced in against the clean tone, so a pretty usable delay. I get Again, I do like how the knobs are color coded to the LED. I think that's a really clever touch. Let's check out what the reverb can do. So we jump over to our reverb and it's based on a blackface fender. I've just got the mix sitting at about half and this is where we end up with it there. So fairly long and fairly bright. If I go to my bridge pickup, There's still a lot of reverb there. Let's start at the minimum. So no reverb, then we go to say nine o'clock. It's still quite long there. The spring is definitely the longer style and it's still quite bright, but about that nine or eight o'clock is a pretty subtle setting otherwise. Pretty nice way to just add a little bit of touch of that reverb into your existing sound. If we go to the other side of the spectrum and pull it up to three o'clock, this is how wet it gets. Which is very, very, very reverbed. <laughs> So very, very wet. Just quickly for science comparison. So you can dial it in, but that lower part of the range is going to be a little bit more fiddly than the higher part of the range. If you're doing for more soundscape sounds and more ambient sort of tones, more surf kind of sounds, then that reverb is going to be perfect. It's nice and bright, so it's going to reproduce the sound of your guitar pretty well without getting too muddy. And if you wanted to filter that down, you'd need to put an EQ after it or something. But it does sound pretty good as it is. The option to have reverb, delay and the overdrive in one pedal is a really good option for people who are playing rock, blues, even some jazz, uh, prog music where you're going to be having a, a bit more use of the reverbs and delays, uh, your classic rocks, even some punks and, and harder metal kind of sounds will use a little bit of reverb and an overdrive and you might just kick the delay on for a solo here or there or just to give yourself a little bit of texture to play off compared to the other parts of the songs. So I don't think there's many genres of music that the rumble seat, the rumble seat wouldn't cover. It's all going to come down to how well you're able to set the delay and the reverb. Setting the reverb is going to be a little harder than setting the delay subtly just because I think the subtle sounds are in that nine o'clock through to seven o'clock position. 
However, the mix control for the delay does make it pretty easy. So as an all round pedal, as a pedal that you could buy this as your first pedal, it's a really, really good option. We've got great sounding overdrive, a very, very useful delay and a pretty common reverb. You don't get a lot of control over the reverb, but the idea of this pedal, I think, is to give yourself a little bit of simplicity, something you can rely on at a gig, just one box, one power supply, plug your leads in, and you've got your delay, your reverb, and your amp style overdrive all in the one box, making for a pretty versatile pedal. As far as stacking the rumble seat with other pedals goes, because your reverb is actually at the end of your chain and there's no way to put effects before the reverb, but say, after the overdrive, most of your classic rock sounds are going to come by putting other pedals before it. So you could put a Tube Screamer style pedal, an overdrive or a wah up the front here, and it's going to be still a fairly classic style signal chain. If you want to do some more shoegaze kind of sounds, then you could put fuzzes and things after this and really use your delay and reverb to blur the lines of attack in your playing. And that way you'll get those cool ambient bursting chords come through from a pedal that is really not aimed at that kind of thing. It's more aimed at the rockabilly, rock, ska, punk, surf kind of sounds. So being able to do that kind of versatile playing with it is really useful. So now we've talked about how each of those single pedals can benefit you and, the, and the, really the advantages of having something so compact and simple to use, I thought we'd turn everything on and see what crazy noises we can make. So I'm gonna go back to the rumble drive and I'm just gonna back our gain off to about one o'clock because I think there it seems really natural. Not too saturated, not too bright of tone. And I'm going to go to my reverb. Sounds pretty good. And then if we push our delay on, and speed that time up. And I'm gonna get a few more repeats and a bit more volume. I'm trying to create the sound where the delay is actually going to almost sustain the pedal by starting to feed back. there. Getting pretty close. That's it. You can just hear that delay starting to take off when I play. mix, a little more reverb. So they work pretty well together and you can definitely get some of those weirder kind of reverb and elongated sort of sounds, which is pretty unusual from a pedal that has such a good amp-like response in its overdrive channel. So just to quickly recap, it's super versatile. It's very, very easy to manage because it's all in one pedal. I mentioned earlier, you just need one power supply to drive this whole thing. No daisy chains, no multi-channel power supplies, none of that nonsense. Your guitar goes straight in, you come out of that straight into your amp and there's enough EQ there on that overdrive to really tune it up into whatever you're using. So I think as far as a first pedal goes, or maybe a one-step solution, the rumble seat is a really great option. I dig the sound of the overdrive, and I think that the extended time in the analog delay makes it more, more versatile than a more traditional or a more vintage style unit. I would probably put a wah-wah pedal before it and maybe some kind of boost like a KTR clone or maybe even a, an SD-1 style uh, mid-boost overdrive. But 
it does have a lot of sounds in the box straight away and having the gain set a little bit higher and using your guitar volume, you get a lot of versatility out of the overdrive. However you set the delay and reverbs will really, really help to pass you through a few different genres. If you're interested in checking out one of these rumble seats, you can do so by following the link below. Don't forget that if you've liked the video, we really appreciate that feedback. Thumbs up, a subscribe, a like, a share, a comment about something you've liked or something you'd like to see. That's all that good stuff that we would really like some feedback on. If you're really enjoying them, you can be one of our esteemed Patreon members by heading to the link below and signing up there. Those members do help us to make sure that we're putting out as much good content as consistently and frequently as we possibly can. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.